Most developers already know that Redis is a mega-fast in-memory database, often used as a cache to make traditional databases faster. But what most developers don't know is that Redis can also be used as a primary app database, thanks to a suite of modules that add additional data structures and commands to core Redis. They can handle JSON data, full-text search, graph relationships, and many other features. In today's video, we'll put this claim to the test by building a full-text autocomplete search inspired by something like Algolia or Elasticsearch, where the user can add items to the database and instantly view the filtered results. We'll build this project from scratch using Next.js, allowing us to use React on the front end and Node.js to interact with Redis on the back end. As an added bonus, Redis just released a brand new SDK called Redis Ohm that supports object mapping in Node.js. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can follow along with the full article on Fireship.io. Let's first take a look at what we're building today. We have a form that when submitted will add a new item to the database. In Redis, this data would normally be saved as a hash data structure, but a hash doesn't support nested objects, so instead we'll be storing this data as native JSON thanks to the Redis JSON module. Now, after adding a few items to the database, we may want to retrieve them later. When I type into the search form field, you can see that it automatically updates the results in the UI after every keystroke. That's made possible by Redis Search, which is an incredibly powerful module that can index all of the fields on your JSON dataset, at which point you can perform complex queries like you would with the WHERE clause in SQL and aggregations like SUM and COUNT. Now we're ready to start building. There are a few different ways you can get started with Redis. The easiest option is to sign up for Redis Cloud. I collaborated with Redis Enterprise Price Cloud to make this video, and they're providing a $200 credit and also a chance to win a Tesla Model 3 if you use this code before January 31st. So that's pretty awesome, but more importantly, Redis is consistently the most loved database out there. I've used it myself for many years, and that's why I decided to work with them on this video. After you sign in, you'll be prompted to create a new subscription. Go ahead and do that, and you can choose a free fixed plan to play around. Once that's done, create a database, and when creating it, make sure to add the add-on modules of Redis Search and Redis JSON. And you now have your own database that can scale infinitely in the cloud. To connect to it, you'll notice this public endpoint URL, as well as a password for the default user. Now the question becomes, how do we connect to our database? This is optional, but the first thing I would recommend doing is downloading the Redis Insight tool, which gives you a GUI to analyze and manage data in the database. Once installed, click the option to add a new database, and then paste in the public URL that Redis Cloud provided you with. Then also enter the username of default and the password it generated, and then it should automatically connect to your database. The cool thing about Redis is that it's really easy to learn because everything is organized into a set of key value pairs. Here's a little crash course of the Redis basics. To add a new item to the database, you create a new key. Every key is unique and is used to identify a value in the database. A key can also have a data type. In this case, we'll use a string but there are more complex data types, like a hash for objects of multiple key value pairs, lists, and as we'll see later, JSON data. For now, let's go ahead and save a string with a key of hello and a value of world. It also gives you the option to specify a TTL or time to live, after which point the data will be automatically deleted if you want. Leave it blank to keep the data forever. Now the unique thing about Redis is that when you save data, that data is kept in memory, as opposed to the disk like it would be on most other traditional database systems. What that means is that Redis is extremely fast. There's no need for a round trip to the disk when retrieving data. But on Redis Cloud, this data is also persisted, which means there's never any actual data loss. Now, to make a read to the database, let's go over to the Workbench panel, and you'll notice a terminal here where we can write commands. Redis has a bunch of built-in commands that allow us to do different things in the database. For example, what we just did previously was a set. With a command, it would look like set, followed by hello world. Now to read the string, we can use the get command, followed by the key name of hello. Now, there are tons of other commands we could execute here to interact with our data, but that's enough to give you the general idea. Now we're ready to build something cool, and in order to do that, we'll want to first initialize Next.js. From the command line, run npx create next app, then open it up in VS Code. The project has only one dependency, Redis OM, which you can install with npm. This library is brand new, so keep in mind that there may be changes or enhancements in the near future. What it does is map your data into a JavaScript class or entity 
making it really easy to build a consistent schema around your data. And it simplifies many of the create, read, update, and delete operations that you'll want to do on the database. First, we'll need to connect to our cloud database. And for that, I'm creating a file called .env.local that contains environment variables that will automatically be picked up by Next.js. Inside of it, we have a value of Redis URL, which is formatted with the username and password, along with the URL and port of the actual database. Replace these values with the ones provided by Redis Cloud. Now from there, let's create a lib directory and a file named redis.js. Inside the file, we have a few imports from Redis Ohm. The first one we'll want to think about is the client. That's the main entry point for interacting with the database. To connect to our database in the cloud, we call client open followed by process.env.redisurl. That will access the environment variable that we set up earlier. Now, because of the way Next.js works, I'm also going to create an async function called connect that will only open the connection if it's not already open. Then the next thing we'll do is define an entity for our data. An entity is basically like a database table. We first define a class like car, and extend it with entity. From there, we can give it a schema that contains a variety of different properties, each with its own specific data type. By default, this represents a hash in the Redis database. However, when building a more traditional application, you might find it easier to work with JSON. To use the Redis JSON module, simply add the option of data structure JSON, and now Redis will operate more like a document-oriented database. Now that we have this entity, we're ready to start creating data. To handle the basic process, I'm going to export an async function here called create car. And then the first thing it does in the body is connect to the database client. From there, we create a repository by combining the schema and the client together. If we want to create new data, we can use the create entity method with a JavaScript object, which later we'll get from a form input in the UI. And lastly, we can call repository save with the car data to commit it to the database, and Redis will return an automatically generated unique ID. The key is car colon unique ID, then the value is JSON data with the schema that you defined. Now the question becomes, how do we run this function? For that, we'll need two things. We need an API route, which will give a name of cars.js to handle the write operation on the back end. Then we'll need a React component, which I'll give a name of carform.js in the lib directory that will handle the user input and make a request to that API route. Let's first implement the API route. We first import the create car function we just defined, then every API route in Next exports a default function named handler, which contains a request and response where the request is the incoming data and the response is the outgoing data you want to send back to the client. In this case, we'll want to use the request body, which will be JSON data from the form to create a new car. Once Redis is done writing that data, we can then send a response back to the client, letting them know it was successful with the new unique ID. Now that we have an API endpoint, we want to call it from the front end when a form is submitted. In carform.js, I have a React component, and in the JSX, we have a standard HTML form with a few different text inputs. It also has a submit button, and we will intercept the submit event by passing a function to the form called handle submit. In the handle submit function, We'll first call event prevent default to prevent the page from refreshing on submit. And then here's a cool trick when handling form data in a React component. Normally, to convert the form event to JSON, you would have to access each individual property, which leads to some really ugly and tedious code. A better approach is to convert the event target, which is the HTML form, to the form data class, which is built into the browser. That will organize the form fields into a bunch of key value pairs, which we can then turn into a plain JavaScript object by using object from entries. Now it's important to point out that the name that you provide to the form input determines the name of the key. So you'll wanna make sure that that name matches the schema that you chose for your Redis data. Now the final step is to make a request to the API endpoint, which we can do by using the fetch API in the browser. And for the body, we pass it the JSON stringified form data. You'll wanna make sure the content type is JSON and the method is post. From there, we can send the request, convert it to JSON, and then console log the result. And now there's just one thing left to do. Let's go into the index.js file and declare the car form there. And now we can fire up the next.js app by running npm run dev. In the UI, you should have a form that looks like this. Mine looks a little prettier because I've added bootstrap for styling. And when you fill it out and submit it, 
it should console log the ID that was created by Redis. In addition, you should be able to open up Redis Insight to see the data there as well. At this point, we have a very basic full stack application with Redis. Now you might be wondering, how do I query and filter this data to show it on the front end? That's where Redis Search comes in. It's a very powerful module that allows you to index and search across your data set. To use it though, we first need to create an index. And to do that, I'm going to go back into the redis.js file and create a new function called create index. All this function needs to do is reference the repository and call the create index method. Now, before we use this function, another thing I want to point out is that we can go up into our schema and add a text search true option to any fields that want to enable full text search. What this allows us to do is query this data with fuzzy matching, where it can recognize typos and common words, yet still return the intended result. Let's go ahead and add the full text option to the description. Now, creating the index is only something you need to do once. For convenience, I'm going to add another API route here called create index that imports that function and then sends a response back. Once defined, we can then go to the browser and access the URL API create index to add the index to the database. Now that we have an index, let's go back to the redis.js file and create a function to search for cars in the database. This function will take a query as its input, which will be whatever the user types into the form, and then it calls the repository search method, which has all kinds of different capabilities, like pagination, it can retrieve the first and last items, it can get a count of the total items in the database, and also perform logical comparisons like greater than, less than, and so on. The first method to call is where, which references one of the properties in the JSON data. In this case, we can search the make of the car for exact equality with the EQ method and pass it the query as an argument. If we also want to search the model of the car at the same time, we can chain or model and also check that for equality. Now, when it comes to the description, we don't want exact equality, but instead we want to check the matches within a full text search context. That tells it to return results even if there are typos and things like that. And finally, we tell it to return all the results from that query. That takes care of the search logic. Now, once again, we need an API route, which we can easily set up by adding a search.js file inside of which we export a handler. It'll grab the search query from the URL, call the search cars method, and then return the response, which will be an array of cars back to the client. And now the last thing we need is a form on the front end to make calls to the search endpoint. I'm creating a new file called searchform.js, which is a React component. And in the JSX, we have an input that triggers a search function whenever it is changed. So that'll fire whenever the user types into the form. Now this component will also need to have state to represent the hits or results that we get back from the search engine. We can define that state with the useState hook and initialize it as an empty array. In the search function, we will first grab the current value of the form and then format it as a URL parameter. The API route is expecting it in that format to pass the value along to Redis. Now you'll also notice that I'm only going to execute this code if the query length is greater than two. That's just to prevent excessive API calls to the database or API route. It would also be a good idea to debounce this code because currently it will make an API call for every keystroke and that's probably more API calls than you actually need for something like this. From there, we can use the fetch API to make a request to the search endpoint along with the parameters. The result we get back will be an array of cars that we can set as the state on this component. Now let's display the card data by setting up an unordered list, then map each individual hit to a list item. I'm using the entity ID as the key and then displaying whatever data I want to show in the UI, like the make and model and image of the car. Congratulations, you just built a full stack, full text search feature with Redis and Next.js. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If you wanna see more Redis or Next.js content, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.